Hello my friends, welcome to my Energy Economist channel. We're gonna start today by knowing the development of oil and gas fields. So stay with me. The success of an oil field depends on the energy available to drive oil from the reservoir rock into the wells. There are three resources of energy, but they differ enormously in effectiveness. A. If the oil reservoir has a natural connection to water, as in an ordinary anticline, then water can displace oil out of the reservoir rock and into the wells. The efficiency of this water drive can drive as much as 60% of the original oil in the wells. B. If there is initially a separate accumulation of natural gas above the oil, the operator can locate the casing perforations only in the oil saturated zone. As the oil is produced, the gas cap expands to displace oil, but the process recovers only about 40% of the oil. C. In most oil reservoirs, initially there is some natural gas dissolved in the oil. As the oil field is produced, bubbles of gas separate from the oil and push oil toward the wells. Typically, less than 20% of the oil is recovered, planning the entire life of the oil field soon after the field is discovered has substantial benefits. Petroleum engineers can locate water injection wells and gas injection wells as part of the plan for drilling the early production wells. The program can be optimized for total oil recovery instead of maximizing the early cash flow. Computer simulations allow what if questions to be asked while planning the field. However, Simple computer simulations can be highly misleading. The computer problem is not highly difficult for a natural gas reservoir in a mythical homogeneous isotropic reservoir with no natural water drive. Real reservoir rocks have lots of internal structure. For instance, little streaks of mudstone a quarter inch thick have a huge effect on fluid flow. The rate of flow of gas, oil and water is highly dependent on how much gas, oil and water are present. At the very birth of the modern computer age, John von Neumann identified weather forecasting and oil reservoirs as important problems requiring huge amounts of computer power. Large size could increase the probability of being discovered in several ways. We start with the idea that each oil field has a characteristic lens. Lens is just a rough concept that stands for either the width, the thickness, or the length of the oil field. Here are examples of how lens might be involved. A. The volume of an oil field depends on the lens cubed. Lens times, width times, thickness. Oil fields with big volumes might leak enough oil to the surface to attract a crowd of drillers. B. The area depends on the length squared, length times width. This is essentially Menard's model. The bigger the area on the map, the more likely you are to hit it when throwing a dart. C. The diameter is roughly the same as length, length raised to the power 1. An example might arise if I start my exploration drill over what I think is the oil field. But if my location is wrong by more than the diameter of the oil field, it's a dry hole time. The development of petroleum fields involves the collective and integrated efforts and experience of many disciplines. Geologists and geophysicists are needed to define, describe and characterize the reservoir. Reservoir engineers set the strategy for producing the petroleum reserves and managing the reservoir for the life of the field. 
Production and Completion Engineers Design the well completions and production facilities to handle the varying production methods and conditions and Drilling Engineers Design the well drilling programs based on well completion design In the past, each group used to work separately and deliver its product to the next group That is, when geologists and geophysicists finish their work they deliver the product to the reservoir engineering group Then, reservoir engineering would deliver the results of their work to production engineering and so on In almost all cases, it was necessary for each group to go back to the previous group for discussion, clarification or request additional work This has been realized as a very inefficient operation In recent years most major companies have adopted what is known as the multidisciplinary team approach for field developments. In this approach, a team consisting of engineers and scientists covering all needed disciplines is formed. The team members work together as one group throughout the field development stage. Of course, other specialists such as computer scientists Planners, cost engineers, economists, and so forth work closely with the team or may become an integral part of the team. Experience has shown that this field development approach is very efficient. More and more companies are moving in this direction. If you want to learn more about the development of oil and gas fields, you could do so in my book, Economic Study of Oil and Gas Exploration which is published on Amazon check it out at the link in the description please take a second to hit the like button hit the subscribe button and don't forget to also hit the notification bell thank you for watching and goodbye